Thank you. The gentleman's time has expired. Um, again, for the record, the article that I mentioned uh, was from CNBC, a Saudi oil giant Aramco post record 161 billion profit for 2022. This is the right, this would be submitted to the record without objection. Next, um, I'll call on my colleague and friend from Texas, Ms. Jackson Lee. Ms. Jackson Lee, you are recognized. Not on. Is the talk button? Might be to the right. Yep, it's under. It's under all that. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sorry, Director. Can we look at each other? I know that we. I've got. I'm not. I don't have a direct line here of uh, being able to uh, to see. We we appreciate the work that is going on in this in this room. Uh, let me thank the chairman and the ranking member for the time uh, allotted and thank the director uh, for the leadership of the Biden administration for a timely submission of a budget. Um, just a question, uh, have you gotten a budget from Speaker McCarthy uh, from the majority in the House? Uh, you may remember I said I've I worked here for a long time and I will say budgets are uh, congressional Document, um, so we we would not be in receipt of that. Um, but there, there are various proposals floating around. I don't think they're. But I, you I have not you have not chairman. seen a final floating around budget at uh, this time. I, I have not. Thank you. Um, let me um, uh, get you focused back on this deficit, and I'm very delighted. And I have to go quickly. I see uh, that um, uh, the budget lowers the deficit by three trillion. Just a quick response. The deficit could be increasing, but what is the value of the fact that this budget puts it down three trillion? Because from my perspective, there is movement and recognition that we continually, as the deficit grows, we're still building to take it down. So please explain that. So look, the 2.9 trillion, nearly three trillion, is a reflection of nothing changed, no policies were enacted. Uh, the deficit uh, would be almost $3 trillion higher than the president's policies he's put forward. And um, could you explain the value of making the tax, child tax credit permanent uh, for families in America, working and middle class families in America? Look, the, it's one of the few programs we get to say we beta tested in 2021. We saw the results uh, for American families, for children who were lifted out of poverty. Uh, and this president believes that that was a good statistic. Uh, and we've seen those poverty levels go back up, which means that the child tax credit worked. Uh, and we'd like to see it continue. And the, um, the most, maybe as large as housing, child care, where your budget provides a vital uh, infusion of dollars for child care for working families. How, how does it see that being an economic engine booster? Uh, I talked about it a little earlier. We saw women drop out of the labor market uh, during uh, the pandemic at uh, high levels. Uh, thankfully, we're seeing the return. But if we want to increase uh, labor market participation uh, for people with young children, uh, child care is often an economic burden for those families, and we'd like to do something about that. Let me follow up uh, with the issue of housing. 30% uh, of, of a family's income or more. Um, do you plus up housing uh, opportunities or housing products to encourage, even with the uh, lack of supply, uh, how does the budget respond to that need? So we continue uh, to support vouchers, because in some parts of the country where there is housing supply, vouchers are still needed uh, for families. Um, but we recognize that many parts of uh, the country and your districts, housing supply uh, is tight and, and some places are crisis level. So we have a suite of proposals, uh, mainly through tax credits that would promote uh, the building of affordable, uh, affordable housing. Let me do a round robin. I'm looking at a proposed Freedom Caucus budget that wants to go back to 2019 levels and I'm seeing the slashing of veterans health care, uh, education, health care programs uh, gutted 29 billion. Uh, defunding of law enforcement and disaster response. Um, what, 20, what does 2019 levels really mean? The country is growing. Um, we have to respond to that. We are the United States, not an individual state. How do you respond to that? 
Look, cutting means you do less. Uh, and the discussion will be what, what is tolerable and what doesn't impact the economy negatively. Uh, this president certainly does not agree that he'd like to see fewer FBI personnel, uh, and one, that would mean that. Uh, it would mean fewer law enforcement grants, uh, meaning fewer cops uh, in our communities, uh, and fewer Pell grants. Uh, the list goes on. Opioid crisis we talked about earlier. We can send less state grants uh, to, to governors to, to battle uh, that and, uh, and on I mean, many nutrition programs. I'll move to the next question very quickly. It is important to have civil rights for all Americans. For some reason, people think civil rights is a race-based determination. My school district, the Houston Independent School District, is being taken over unfairly by the state of Texas. Civil rights is important for those children. How are you funding civil rights? And I believe it's not woke agenda. It is being awake. How are you funding the civil rights uh, entities in the various agencies that respond to Americans who feel that their civil rights have been violated? So, you know, there's Department of Justice uh, Civil Rights Division, I think most people are aware of. Uh, this budget would seek an increase for that and uh, ensure that we uh, make sure people, uh, states, are, are following the law when it comes to civil rights in this country. I, I, the gentlelady's time has expired. I thank my friend from Texas. 